Good evening. Welcome to Grandma's Attic Music Review. Oh my goodness, it's so much fun to be here. And um, we're just working really hard to bring you the best of the best of the best. So every once in a while, I don't get to see musicians before they come here. But I have to go check them out and see what's going on with them. We have a um, open mic that happens on Sunday evenings. I think it's the second and fourth, or is it just the second? Last Sunday. The last Sunday. Okay, the last Sunday, doesn't matter whether it's the fourth or the fifth. The last Sunday of the month, down at the Custom House Museum. And um, our friend Christine has been very, very influential in getting that to happen. Recently, not, not real recently, but lately, She's been seen hanging around with this hippie type guy, and I was kind of wondering in the background if he was a musician. And she let me know that, of course, yes, he was. And so um, finding out who he was and what he did, I went looking to see what kind of stuff he did, and he um, graciously said that he would come on to the show and bless you all with his music. He's been doing music for a couple of years, um, we won't say how many. He'll tell you that in the interview. But um, I think you're going to enjoy this. He's got some originals for you, and he's just going to share his life with you. So please, Jean, I don't have your last name. Oh, oh, that's right. I did know that. So please help me welcome to your TV, to your heart, to your living room, whatever, Jean Paris. There you Thank go. Thank you very much, Doc. You're welcome. So, um, I'm very um, influenced by one of the uh, great songwriters I really, really adore. I'm going to start with a cover by John Prine. The song's called Bruised Orange. And um, there's many things in this song that um, I really related to, you know, you get to hear a song sometimes that just impacts you, that it's like it's reflecting your life, so. Been broke. 
brought down a zero, pulled out, put back there. Sat on a park bench with a girl with the black hair. My head shouted down to my heart, you better look out below. Hey, it ain't such a long drop, don't stammer, don't stutter. From the diamonds in the sidewalk to the dirt in the gutter, and you carry those bruises to remind you wherever you go. You can gaze out the window and get mad, get madder, throw your hands in the air and tell me what does it matter. It don't do no good to get angry. Help me, I know. Stain and anger, it grows weak, it grows bitter. You become your own prisoner as you watch yourself sit there, wrapped up in a trap of your very own chain of sorrow. John Fine. I'm going to do an original next. Um, I have been playing my whole life, but um, didn't really start doing attempting originals, which shocks a lot of people, um, till just before COVID, and spent a lot of time during COVID doing these. And um, also, um, again, a little dark time in my life, and so that none of my songs are really cheerful. <laughs> but they are my originals, so this one is called The Grip. It's a little bit autobiographical, just slightly. trace of sound the locks are all turned down in the dark he looks around that closet calls again as on every single lonely night he turns all the knobs deftly in the dim of the late light oh yeah Plucks his ice with cunning so that not a sound is heard. The young ones sleeping deeply and they're hearing not a word. The potions fill up high, the fizz it fills down low. He takes it all down again, oh, too easily it goes. Take another round. 
sink into the dim Stare into the void As the world still spins and spins I said hang on, stay on Fighting, falling away As the clock ticks now To the empty dawning of just another day The coats, the brooms are reaching low to that cold corner floor in the darkness. You know, he surely knows the trembling hand can tell by the grip the wine from the rum without even taking a sip, even a sip. I do. And it's a little sad, but it's not as sad as you made yeah. it out to be. All right. I'll probably go back and forth with the covers. You said you wanted to do one now, right? You want me to go live? You can do it right now. I'm ready. Okay. All right, we'll be in a minute. Well, can't forget to do a Bob Dylan tune. This is oh one my of my God. favorites. <laughs> Stray your hair is smooth on the pillow where you lie. But I don't sense affection, oh, no gratitude or love. Your loyalty is not to me, but to the stars above. One more cup of coffee for the road. of coffee before I go to the valley below yeah your daddy he's an outlaw or a wanderer by trade teach you how to pick and choose he's gonna show you how to throw the blade he oversees his kingdom so no stranger does intrude his voice it trembles as he calls out for another plate of food one more cup of coffee please please for the road the seas of future just like your mama and yourself you know you never learn to read or write there's no books upon your shelf and your pleasure knows no limits your voice is like a metal lock but your heart is like an ocean so mysterious and dark cup of coffee for the road.
Everybody loves Bob Dylan. Okay. Um, back to an original. This is called Spirit Away. And it's uh, sometimes in life uh, we take, have a vivid memory of a passage in our life or a certain time. And it's just there. You know, it's dug in. You'll always carry it with you. And this is an honest to God um, sort of remembrance by me of how I felt as a young child. Um, I grew up in a, a very strong traditional Italian-American family. My mother from Luxembourg in Europe. And uh, so there's some images of that, different things. in the devout way we were told on that blazing day under a sky that was way too vast above we poured out onto the village street in our small patent leather feet black tied shirts and gowns white as a dove how could we figure out how to gain the holy touch never ever meant to doubt it so much child never really seems to know what is real and what are the ghosts because imagination it flows just like water falls hands class confess truth to know this child never really wanted to go to the echoes of the statue candlelit halls. How could we figure out how to gain the holy touch? Never, never, never meant to doubt it so much.
pretty uh, amazing. So let me see my time here. I'll go back to a cover. Um, I'm going to do a Pink Floyd song. Woohoo! I love Pink Floyd. I do it a little differently. This is Time. Oh boy. song is called The Odds, and I, I, I do like to talk about the songs a little bit, but I don't want to be preachy either. <laughs> um, but it is interesting that if, if you think about life, um, it's almost like everything is a gamble. Everything has odds. So what are the odds of a medical treatment? What are the odds of school? What are the odds that um, the girl you like is going to like you, you know, and, and we take risks throughout our whole life, but there are odds um, that are destructive. And this comes out of someone uh, close to me in my family that influenced this along with the state of our society today. Uh, In 
streets are falling heavy. The din of the news pours in. That Monday night on the dog, he could surely smell a wind. So snap on another brew cap. The odds are said to be 10 to 4. Guess coming out even makes that losing man pine for more. Confess whatever is left to say. The game rolls on. The anchor man warns of a looming war. You say all the news is fake. All that matters is to win, lose, or draw. Your sons and daughters, they look to you as that late night phone does toll. And did you win all the stakes? Did you count all the costs to your beloved souls? I say, look away. You gotta pay to play on just another day. Fade away. Time to pray. Whatever is left to say The past always points to tomorrow You never lose so your story goes What's left you're not so sure you really know Whisper in our ears exactly what was so and tune in plug in get your lessons in the breaking news past the game shows and the jokers yeah the truth is always yours to choose for your circle of love is fading bet you thought that you really did care the facts are all the facts now and what you had just vanished into the air. Fill the grave with your rockets. Take the switch out of your pockets. As your man at the top lies, and you can see it always in his eyes. You see, there comes a time in every life to settle many scores. The odds have changed, and they never really were. left you with nothing more to say. Wow. I'm going to do a short Paul Simon song, another writer I revere. called Peace Like a River, off his first solo album. Ah, peace like a river ran through the city. Long past the midnight curfew, you know we sat starry-eyed. follows like a plague and nobody knew from time to time 
if the plans will change. with wires you can beat us with chains you can outrun your rules but you know you can't outrun the history train I've seen the glorious day song and then come talk to me? I'll do one more. Awesome. I'll peruse a list and I think I've been rotating so I should probably do one more original. And it's not a long one. This is called Wheat or Chaff, um, which comes out of many philosophies including it's a biblical reference. Um, and I, I guess I was thinking in the depths of COVID about such darkness and such incredible things happening in our, with our society and the world. Um, everything is a choice. I'm gonna go with the wheat or with the chaff. Just might till. Should it matter who will stand or who will will? Just who will decide innocence from guilt? Said it all comes down to the weed or the chaff. Yeah, it all comes down to the weed or the chaff. Yeah, it all comes down. So while Jean gets ready to come over and talk to me, um, let me tell you something that's on my heart. Most of you that have been watching for a while knew my 
best friend, my co-producer, Jabez. Um, he went to Cross the Rainbow Bridge a week ago Friday, and um, he's going to be missed. But I want to tell you something about losing something that you love that much. Cherish the memories. They're bigger than us. Cherish the good times. When someone lives a good long life, and Jabez did, he was 15. Jean, come on over and, and mic up. Um, you have to acknowledge those memories and those good times. You have to acknowledge the good life that those, those beings, whether they're human or cat or dog or horse or zebra, when something has a good long life and it's been given the best life it can, you have to, you have to take those memories and carry them with you. So please, every time you saw him on this show, acknowledge it in your heart. He was a good friend to me and he was a good friend to this community. So rest in peace, Jabez, and uh, thank you for being my best friend for so long. Now let's talk to Gene. Hi, good that's good, okay. that's wonderful. Yeah. Welcome to my show. Your originals are awesome. You know, when people say, I just started writing, I, yeah. a little fear crosses my, you yeah, know, you sure? but there was not one, there was not one of your originals that I would have said, yeah, that needs some help. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe you shouldn't. You. Not one. Yeah, thanks. And that's not normal. <laughs> it's, no, it's really not. Yeah. You know, Gene, I don't know a lot about too many things, mm -hmm. but I know music. Yeah. It's probably the one thing that I know in my soul, if I tell you it sucks, it sucks. Right. And if I tell you it's okay, it's probably good. Yeah. But if I tell you that all your original songs were heartfelt right. and real and had good melodies right. and good good flow, they were. Yeah. So Thanks. take them and, and run yeah. with them because yeah. they're amazing. Are you gonna put out yeah. a CD now? No, not yet. <laughs> I, I did oh, come on. Uh, well during COVID I get into simple home recording. Okay. With a very simple interface and, and an online program that I paid the subscription for. It was not expensive. And um, I did about 40 songs, um, about 15 originals and 25 covers, but it really was, um, it, it was very uh, revealing because when you wear your headphones and you listen to every breath of your singing right. and every pluck of your guitar pick, and I basically did it, you know, like acoustic guitar, electric guitar parts, because I'm I was primarily an electric guitar player most I of the time. I know you life. are. Um, and drums, and then I added my own vocal harmonies. You nice. Know, three, four part harmonies. Yeah, yeah. So I have, I have a collection of those, and of course, the love of my life, Christina. Um, I'm so glad you It's pushing have found me to other. like, to like, you know, share those, yeah. So. Okay, second push. Yeah. So. Second push, and I wouldn't push if it yep. wasn't a good thing. Right. So now you have two females telling you to do yes. the right thing. And I'm, you called her the love of your life, and I'm so glad you two have found each other. Mm -hmm. you, it just seems to work so well, and she looks so remarkably happy. Mm -hmm. But so do you. Thank you. You know, I didn't know you before her, mm -hmm. but the glow that you two carry together is just, <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. We could. People now, say that a lot. To us. Huh? People say that a lot. Strangers on the road stop us. Like, can we take a picture of you? Because you guys it's carry amazing. that that know, aura of yeah. of togetherness, yeah. that connectivity that happens when two people meet that connect. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. You know, yeah. I married my wife a little over a month after dating mm. her. Mm -hmm. Like. Yeah. Right. When it's right, it's right. Anyway, let's yeah. talk about your music. Yeah. When did you start playing music? When did you know you needed to play music? I was in fourth grade. Um, I was a bookish kid. I okay. didn't go out and play a lot. I was very shy, very insecure. Very, very intelligent. Did a lot of reading, yep. drawing. Um, my brother is the opposite of me. He's this like outgoing, kind of compulsive personality. He's had, you know, some struggles. In yep. His, um, he wanted to learn guitar, so they bought him a $40 guitar downtown, found a guitar teacher who was um, Mr. Greeley, um, who lived in Pawkatuck, Connecticut, an older man. And um, my brother didn't stick with the lessons. He just, 
he, he just went full out. It was not out. enough. It was and too they, much. And they said, maybe, maybe Jean wants to. Went, okay. <laughs> okay. But the lessons, what I missed out for people of my generation, the lessons were he would write out many of these sort of like Italian songs, like O Sola Mio, or um, in, in pencil on music paper, and we had to play da 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 da, but I didn't get to learn, you know, rock and roll and right, Simon right, and right, Garfunkel right, right. and Beatles. Um, but your mother must have loved the Italian. Yeah, and I, you know, we had little recitals like fifty kids playing the same guitar lines. It was, um, but then uh, again later as a teenager, I, I played more, and then um, then I got in a, a general business band in 1979, 1980. We were together for eighteen years. Wow. It wasn't my first love. You know, I love from, you know, Merle Haggard and John Prine up to Yes and right. Pink Floyd. Um, really was influenced a lot by Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, Me too. Eric Clapton, Allman Brothers. Um, um, I never got into heavier arena rock, the sound of the 80s and 90s. Um, and that band, uh, I can mention one person from the Waterford area um, that it was a four-piece band and we just excelled, but he was sort of the musical leader of our group, Frank Procassini. Ooh, he was I a, don't know that name, He but was the head of the music department at Clock Lane Junior High School, oh, did okay. all the marching bands, world-class horn player, um, passed away last year. Um, and after 18 years, um, then I did a couple other, you know, bands. One was a, f a full rock band where we did lots of stuff, you know, from The Who to Heart to Journey. To, nice, uh, nice. And then the, the biggest musical moment for me in my life was 2008, the fall. Um, I met a woman named Amy Coffey, um, who had, was from Alabama. And she saw me playing one night at Perks and Corks and Wesley sitting in. Uh -huh. And um, walked by, hit me, and said, you're a funny guy, you know that? And I go, who was that? I saw her, you know. And we became friends, listening to music there. And it was weeks before I realized she was a singer and could sing like insane. Um, and um, we, we started on Tuesday nights. She wanted to create a duo. And every Tuesday, we were the standing music at Perks and Corks in Westerly. I, I know the name. And then I in walks in Carl Franklin, and we became friends. And Wheelhouse morphed into a full band. It was often, it was always myself and Amy and Carl at the core. And then often Jay Franklin would play keyboards. Right, right, right. And we, another time we had Al Laporte on keyboards, um, various drummers. That was the most special group I'd ever been in, yeah. Well, you and get the Franklin five, brothers in there, and yeah. their musical prowess is right. amazing. Right. Obviously, your musical talent yeah. is outstanding. Yeah. And I think I've heard of her and maybe even seen her perform. Yeah, so um, we were together for about maybe six to eight years. Okay. We, we did big shows at the Knickerbocker, the Windjammer, and always at okay. Brooks and Corks, because there's a reason for that, which I can tell you in a second. Um, but she also was in the band for a short while, Sunday Gravy. Okay. And then the band Green Tea. Um, Interchangeable She was a singer somewhere. in Hope Road, the Bob Marley tribute band. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, so. she's got a voice. Yeah. She's got an it was incredible so, I, voice. And I learned a lot about singing and harmonizing and singing with her was like a knife going through butter, hot butter. Just yeah. was so effortless, yeah. That's nice. And then, um, you know, music crashed due to COVID, the number of places having it. It's coming back slowly, but uh, like in, in downtown and West. it's not the same. Downtown Wesley, there's nothing, nothing except the Knickerbocker. They were well, always like five or six Perks clubs. Perks Court closed and the they malted closed. barley. They stopped the music. Okay, and then the malted barley was like a couple doors down. Right, they, he sold. He yeah. sold. Right. Yeah, well, so what, that's sad. What happened in uh, around 2010, Brian, the owner of Perks and Cox, asked me to start an open mic on a Monday night. Okay. I started it, and it was insane. I got a core group of young people that were all friends came in on a Monday night. We were filled. 
kids hanging out on the sidewalk on the street, hanging out talking. It was such a great vibe, um, great musicianship. We, I'd start at like 8 o'clock and go right to 5 of 1 to fit everybody in. Right. Um, and there were many wonderful musicians, Michael Shikoria, Thor Jensen. Um, I love Thor. Glenn oh Kenzia gosh. would come. Um, Will Houlihan, his name, it goes under the name Haunt the House. And I, watched, I know him. He's been I, on my show. I watched all these young performers like grow under my sort of like... Then a year later, Brian asked me to manage the music completely. So I was the booking person for Perks okay. for 10 years. All right. And I had to book in 24 acts a month because we had music six nights a week. Right. And every single night, it was never a repeat. You know, and we had great ones, great bands. It was so did you have the Meadows Brothers in? Because they played at the Malted Barley with Eric Lichter one night. No. That I had booked them no. there. And I, I never was able to get into Perks and Courts. Oh, it's, it was a difficult place. Difficult. Yeah. Difficult. It was, it was, for me, it was stressful because I'm a musician, and I showered the musicians that would contact me with love. Every single inquiry I answered by email, I used written confirmations by email every gig. I, if there was a new performer, I'd come down there to make sure they understood everything. Right. I'd go out most nights to support the act I hired. That's hard work. Say hi to them. Um, but we didn't pay a lot, and it was awful, often very difficult with crowd packed in there. Yeah. Yep. But I hung on and did it, you know, at the same time feeling that conflict. Well, you know, where you, you say, geez, if this was my place, I would do this and I would do that. Yeah. Right, right. right. That's wonderful. Yeah. So then along comes Cosmic Riffs. Tell us a little bit about well, that, that because that's kind of like you're pushing that to the side right now. But Well, I made that something. my Facebook name. I just didn't want to use my name. I just wanted to have something funny. And I use it on, on my email, too. Okay. My sign off, I go Peace, Love, and a Cosmic and, and um, cosmic Riffs is okay. what I started. Riffs is, you know, you know musical. Yeah, I know what Riffs are. And Cosmic means it's beautiful. I know. So, yeah. Um, and it's stuck, and many, many people know me by that name. Okay, um, so it wasn't a band. What's that? No. Nope. It wasn't a but band. But I used it to, uh, when I played, I, I would be um, Cosmic Cats, Cats spelled with a K. I have okay. a trio with the drummer Ken Serio and a guy named Kyle Rathbun. Um, so I've used the name in that way. I've been tempted, really tempted, one more time in my life to make a band and make my own band to do the material I, I want to I want to do but I feel very insecure about that and, why and then of course like Chris hits me and he goes and other people have said many people would love to play with you you don't get it you know so I got to get past that I, I really have an idea of some of the songs I'd love to do in a band it's kind of what you heard for some of the covers tonight yeah with well, different interpretations I know. wanted to say there's there's two ways to do a cover yeah you either Take it and own it and make it exactly like the original. Right. Or you take it and you own it and turn it into your That's own. That's what I prefer. And you did that right. with the Pink Floyd time. Right. You turned that song into yours and it was amazing. Thank you, yeah. I, um, I'm very picky about covers. Yeah. Um, people come on the show and do covers and I tell people they can play. This is all about you guys right. promoting you. Right. And I tell people often... And I'll, I'll tell you a quick story about that. I was down, it used to be um, the, um, now I can't remember what it was called. It was Frank's, but then it was on the corner there, Tilly Street and Bank Street. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this young lady was going to perform and I was told I needed to see her. Mm -hmm. So I um, took a musician friend of mine and we went down and I wasn't really fond of the venue per se um, I didn't find their food over the top and I don't drink so yeah but this young lady said she was going to do a cover mm -hmm. and she's very young mm -hmm. she she was just barely 18 yeah she said she was going to do a cover then she said she was going to do Stevie Nicks mm -hmm. and my heart sank yeah I was like there's no one <laughs> nowhere That's, that can do you're right about that so yeah. i was like contemplating that she was gonna right. really suck right 
she took that song <laughs> and she turned it into her own song. Yeah. And she, I had hair on my arms standing up. Awesome? I had tears pouring down my face. Yeah. She blew me away to take a song from someone as incredible right. as Stevie Nicks and turn it into that. Yeah. Now when people say they're doing covers, I'm like, whatever yeah. you want to do, I don't care. Yeah. Now, you've just, since COVID, you, you've written all these wonderful songs. What makes you sit down and write a song? Well, then it was, you're, I'm at home isolating, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, so, yeah. Um, I don't know, see, before I did, wrote songs recently, I did do writing. Mm -hmm. You know, poems and, you know, writing. So okay. um, I had that already. It's just how to marry the music. And the other thing is, when you revere such beautiful and great music, it's really hard, you know, like I'll say to Chris sometimes, you know, like I know what's good. You, you do. Know? And I know with my writing what is, I, I, I'm so afraid of being uh, stereotypical with the lyrics. and just the same phrases that everybody uses. You know what I mean? Like um, I don't see that in your music yeah. at all. And that's what I struggle with, yeah. It's just, I just don't want it to be like another cut and paste. You know? and the it's other thing, on my card, I say, doing the songs I love and believe in. I have to believe in the song. Absolutely. So I'm not a, I'm not a good candidate to perform in a typical bar or lounge. Right, because people want you to do covers that they can sing along to. And I, don't, I just don't do those. Right. Know? So, yeah. But that's it's awesome. It's got to be the right kind of room and the right situation. Well, and you also did a Bob Dylan song, yeah. which it's neither here nor there. Mm -hmm. I'm not the hugest Bob Dylan Many fan. Many people say that to me. Yeah. Uh, an, incredible, an incredible poet, an incredible writer. Right. Anyway. Yeah, no, no. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I but totally get it. <laughs> it's a funny thing. Yeah. But it's become a big joke around here because right. pretty much everybody that comes in here that does any covers at all yeah, right. does a Bob Dylan song. song. Yeah, right. It's just how it is. Right. But you had said um, that Crosby, Still, Nash & Young right. are one of, the, one of the first albums I ever bought, mm -hmm. and I think I was maybe 11. Mm -hmm was Four Way Street. Oh. I loved that album. I know every word to You're every song. You're not going to believe this, but I'm going to tell you. What? We'll talk about Cosmic. When you started to say, I said, I was going to tell you next that I learned to play electric guitar with Four Way Street. What an amazing S album. Southern Man, Carry On. Um, it was just, and I, I wore it out, you know, going back to learn the lick moving the needle on my yep, parents' yep, yep, yep. stereo, high five right, right, walnut right. stereo. Um, yeah, I, that album to me is in my top 10, you know. Yeah. It's easily it's easily in my top, yeah, probably 10. Yeah, yeah. But I, I was so into punk rock in the 80s that yeah. some of them moved right, out. Yeah. So, okay. anyway, um, I probably could sit here and do another hour interview with you <laughs> because I, I adore your music. I think it's... Fabulous. It's time for you to cut a CD. You really need to do yeah. that. Your originals yeah. are that good. Yeah. And then we'll put that on my radio show. Okay. All right. okay? I have an Let's offer from a friend, I won't I'll keep it anonymous, who has a beautiful studio and yes, he does. Meant much experience. And he's offered to do it for so me. So go yeah. with that yeah. because I know who you're talking about and I think you should do it. Okay. I think it would be amazing and working together you guys could produce a serious yeah. serious Thanks. thing so do that um, plan on coming back okay and plan on bringing that CD as soon as it's done to the radio okay. station because right. I'll do that I'm so blessed that you came here will you take us out with the song you want another song one okay. more song right. that's what we do one more song to let you take it out okay. while Jean is getting um, back over there let me tell you let me tell you it is midsummer um, it's midsummer, and we <laughs> we're almost into the fall, which means the kids are getting ready for school. There are several places that are collecting school supplies and backpacks. If you didn't know it, many many teachers have to supply kids out of their pocket with school supplies. If you can help supply a kid with their own supplies, then the teachers don't have to do it, 
anything you can do to help kids get back to school with a full backpack, please do. I know I, I can't tell you on the air the places that are collecting backpacks and handing them out, but I'm sure if you look around, you can find them. Please do. We are at the end of the summer. Check out the Hygienic on Thursday nights. It's free music. There's on the plaza, there's um, kind of a flea market type fair type thing on Sundays. I'm not sure which Sundays it is, but it's being produced by um, Rich Martin of The Telegraph. So check that out. And be nice to each other. Take care of your neighbors. If you have elderly neighbors, make sure they have water and fresh air. And the kids in the neighborhood, make sure they have something on their feet. The tar is hot, okay? I love you all. I'll see you next week. And Jean's going to take you out with a song. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, I am, I'm going to do a cover. Um, I do this song for Chris, so it's okay to mention it, right? This is uh, Neil Young, like a hurricane. Once I thought I saw you. Easy bar dancing on the light from star to star. Far across the moonbeam, I know that's who you are. I saw your eyes turning once to fire. like a hurricane there's calm in your eyes and I'm getting blown away to someone safer where the feeling stays I want to love you and I get blown away a dreamer you are just a dream you could have been anyone to me for that moment you touched my lip that perfect feeling when time just slips away on a foggy trip a hurricane there's calm in your eyes and I am getting blown away to someone safer where the feeling stays I want to love you but I'm 